that stupid poetry away, you turdling. Listen to me. What is best in life? Oh, I know, man. Bacon. Oga Kurilenko. Bacon wrapped. Oga Kurilenko. Yeah. Wrong. Idiot, Conan. What is best in life? Liking and subscribing to Miniature Dark Universe on Geeky Hobby Time. Mm, correct. Welcome back to another round of Miniature Dork Universe. Today we're going to be painting Japanese Army. So to that end, I'm going to use this Flames of War um, Type 97 Japanese Medium Tank. It's the old resin and metal variety. Um, I kind of like those though. To me, they have a lot of character, even though they're not as crisp as the new plastics. And some of the new 3D printed stuff is great. I have a couple Type 95 light tanks and the uh, detail around the tracks is superior to anything I've seen. But uh, that being said, these are pretty nice. The radio mast around the turret was a real dick though. It, uh, I had to bend it so much to try and get it to fit that the metal broke. So I drilled them all out and put a piece of, that's a piece of broom bristle that I ran through the holes I drilled. And now it looks all right. I mean, the uh, the arms holding out the radial, or the radio, the antenna, I guess it would be. They're way too thick, but it still looks pretty good. And so let's get right into the painting stuff. For the first step, the entire tank was given a priming coat with Vallejo um, gray primer. When I do these four color camouflage schemes, I don't do any modulation of the paint because it's gonna start getting really busy. So when I'm doing straight up colors, I want them sort of at their full vibrancy. So I'm using a, a lighter color primer to that end. So the paint that goes over top will be more true to its actual color um, because there's no, there's no shading going to go on here, just straight up. You know what I'm saying. I let the primer coat dry for at least 24 hours. You want it to be fairly tough before you get in with your um, base coat is what I'll call it. <clears throat> and for that, I used a Tamiya mix. I prefer Tamiya's when I'm airbrushing because when they dry, they dry with a very hard finish. It doesn't scrape off easy. So I made my own color mix and I'll get into that next. Um, I'll show you what colors that I used to that end. And so, yeah, I'll put on the base color and then all of the subsequent camouflage colors I'm just gonna do with a brush. When I looked into these different paint colors for this particular camouflage scheme for this particular period, I was getting different names and kind of some of the descriptions for the colors were slightly different. For example, there's a mention of a more a darker sort of chocolate brown and then this mahogany brown. I think both were used and I've seen this particular scheme with the mahogany brown in Malaya, um, Philippines, Dutch East Indies. So we're going to go with that. And the first base color is going to be this uh, Kaki Iro, which is one variation of the name I've seen. It may not be 100% proper, but let's just go with it <laughs> for the sake of getting her done. And this is the Tamiya mix. So there's four colors. And each one is just one part to one part to one part to one part. And that makes a fairly close match. Though I wanted it to be a bit more red because I wanted it to match up with an Italeri acrylic that I use when I'm brush painting. So when I'm doing all my highlights, I mix that color with like a light sand. And that's this flat light brown. So to get the red, you know, to add the little bit of red into it, I took Tamiya flat red and mixed it up with a mixing stick. It's just a little metal mixing stick that I have. And I let all the paint off the mixing stick as much as I can, like let it drop off. And then I mixed up my, my mix for this color with that mixing stick, with that little bit of red on. And that's enough to change the color. Red is really extreme, so you gotta be careful when you're mixing with red. Make sure that you're just adding little amounts at a time. But in my case, just that small amount left on the mixing stick was enough to give it that slightly reddish tint that I wanted to match up with the Italeri paint. Here we go, putting the base coat on. This is the Tamiya mix for the Khaki Iro. I'm layering it up with several very light coats. 
and that'll provide us with a nice smooth painting surface and it just jolly well looks nice and we like our stuff to look nice I think now that the base coat is on and dry let that dry for a few hours I'm going to dry brush the entire tank with a good old 1983 Shepherd paint style. And here's where the Italeri paint comes in. I like using these paints for my brushes because Tamiya doesn't brush on very well. So if that wasn't clear before, this is the method to my madness. And it mixes well with these Vallejos, so I'm going to use Iraqi sand to lighten it up. And I'm going to go over the entire tank with a very controlled dry brush. Don't go crazy because it's going to start looking kind of messy. but. That'll give us our highlights, or sort of the beginning of our highlights. And as I go with each camouflage color, I'm going to add a dry brush on top of that carefully too, obviously, when I've got the green and the red on. It's, I'm just going to dry brush a lightened version of that color, probably mixed in with the same dark sand color, um, just to kind of pre-highlight everything. It's easier than doing it all when it's finished painting and trying to stay within the confines of your camouflage. I find when you break it into little compartments it works out a bit better. So I'll take off and do that. But first I'm just going to remind in case this is your first time traveling through Miniature Dork Universe, I've mentioned this in other videos, but if this is your first time I use this golden retarder especially when it comes to dry brushing. When you mix that in with your paint it keeps it from drying too quickly. So the idea is you want to wipe most of the paint off your brush and then brush on a very light coat of the paint, basically. But then if the paint dries on the brush, then your dry brush kind of sucks. Do you know what I mean? So this will slow down the drying time of the paint. You put it on the brush, you wipe it all off. I usually have something close by that I can brush off some of the paint too, so that you get it right where you need it and then hit it with your tank, or that hit the tank with your brush. You know what I'm saying. Next up will be the next brown color, and that is Tochi Iro, which is basically mahogany brown. So guess what? I used Vallejo mahogany brown. Big surprise. So get it to a consistency in a palette or something with water um, so that it flows nicely off the brush. You don't want the paint too thick. I hit it with some more of that golden retarder as an alternative to using say a wet palette it keeps the paint from drying and what you want to do is sort of edge in your camouflage pattern so know what you're doing before you start and then go really smoothly with the brush as smooth as you can that's why the consistency is important and then you'll get that nice sharp edge that you're looking for with a paintbrush camouflage scheme. Hopefully this will stay in focus for you, but uh, sometimes it's a bit of a dick. It does look like it is going the way of the wank a little bit, but see, I'm going, I'm trying to flow really well with the brush. Sometimes I'll come, well not sometimes, all the time. At some point I'll come in from the other end of the, that particular piece of the camouflage pattern I'm painting and join it up somewhere in the middle. And that way it gives you a little control, so it can kind of go a little bit too freestyle sometimes, so this will prevent that from happening. So I just go over to the other side and finish the end of that particular patch of camouflage, and it'll meet up in the middle. You might have to go back over, but the key is to get really precise flowing brush strokes so that you don't have sort of a messy looking edge. Ah, that focus is enough to make me want to puke. But here, that's a bit better. You can see where I'm going. So I have a little bit of a bump back there, but I can come back and fix it. Just keep checking to make sure that your consistency on the brush is good. Sometimes you have to wash the brush off several times and it's worth it. Just do it. Have your water bottle or water jar close by that you wash your brush with. And the key is just to 
ensure that you can get that nice flowing brush stroke as you go across. And once you have the camouflage pattern edged in, just paint in the inside. Again though, make sure you keep the paint coat nice and thin so you don't have this bumpy looking paint finish. And do two coats if you have to. This brown on top of brown is going on fairly solid in one coat though, so that's that'll be good enough. And then we'll move on to our green. So the green color coming up next is Midori Iro. And for that one, I'm going to use Vallejo Camouflage Olive Green. I'm not going to show you painting each color on here because I'm sure you can imagine what it looks like. So keep in mind too that each coat, each different color I'm putting on, I'm giving it a little dry brush with a lightened up version of the color during each step. And that way it saves trying to do it all at once when it's all done. Here's the Midori Iro color put in place. And I've also, as I mentioned before, I, I dry brushed each color as I went with a lightened up version of that color. I just mixed in some Iraqi sand and carefully dry brush in so you don't overlap the, say, the green over the brown. And that should look good. You'll be adding more highlights later too. Um, you know, the, the resin kits don't have the crisp detail, so sometimes the washes can look a little weird, but you can fix that up by using your paintbrush and adding some highlights. So we'll get into that later. But now we'll move on to the yellow color. To get this yellow stripe across the tank and have a nice solid color, I first go under with a like a beige. So in this case, I think I'm using not buff, uh, beige. It's actually Vallejo beige. So we'll go put a Vallejo beige stripe, which will cover these colors nicer, like with a, with a more solid coat. And then I'll go over with the yellow. And then the yellow will appear really bright. The yellow stripe is a very distinctive feature of Japanese armor of this time period. So it's kind of fun to put on, but it takes a bit of time. So like I said, I put the beige stripe down first, and then for the actual yellow, I use Vallejo yellow and mix in a bit of the yellow green. You're not gonna use that much yellow green, it's just enough to take the orangey tint out of the yellow. So I start off with my yellow in a paint palette, and with a small brush, I dip it into the yellow green and just keep mixing it in. You don't want it to be super green, but just enough that that orangey tint goes out. Just use your own judgment, it'll look fine. And here's the yellow stripe completed. So it always crisscrosses over the tank, crossing over the turret. More often right over the hatch, I kinda didn't do that, but I'm not gonna lose any sleep over it. I think overall it turned really well. I'm pretty happy with it. At this point, I paint in all the other colors of the tank. So um, the radio antenna, uh, I painted Tamiya copper, and then all the other colors are just sort of, you know, typical colors that you would use for any armor of any country. So for machine guns and, you know, metal tools, I use um, Vallejo black gray. For the tracks, I mix, mix black gray and chocolate brown. The wheels are black gray. The uh, exhausts, I use the same color I use for the track, same with the tow cable. And later on, I'll use like rusty colors for the exhaust and the tow cable. I'll use like a metallic color to make it look like a braided, you know, metal cable, which is what it is. But you can use whatever colors you use for other tanks. And I painted the interior white. So the inside of the hatch and around the turret ring. For the tools, I did the standard uh, beige brown. But use, you know, they could be in many colors in that range and you'd be fine. Once all the base colors are down, then I give it a coat of Tamiya Clear and that prepares the surface for decals and then washes. So the decals I'm going to use are the Skytrex Command Decision 15mm Japanese armored decals. And uh, they're quite extensive, so get some reference pictures and that should help you getting them on. But I'm not going to get too much into my decal method 
I have a whole video on it though, so you can look on my channel and just dig up that video on how I do my armor decals. If you do them that way, they'll go on nice and flat, nice and smooth. They'll be st sealed in well, and it's going to look really nice. I put the decals on and sealed them in with a just using a paintbrush with more of the Tamiya Clear, and now I'm going to use some of these MIG ammo washes. The acrylic will save my brain cells a bit. And I'll use this flow improver. I've showed you this in previous videos too, but it's just something you can buy at an art supply store and it helps improve the capillary action of the paint. So before I put on the washes, I'll hit it with the flow improver. And I'm going to use black for the engine grills and I'm going to use the dark wash for everything else. And I'm going to make my own, uh, I'm going to use this Liquitex. I find the dust wash with the ammo washes is a bit too yellow, so I'm going to tone it down with some of this Liquitex. But they mix pretty well. They're all acrylic, so you fire in some water and you get pretty good effects. I'm not going to go super crazy either because the track details are sort of rough on these old resin and metal kits. So, yeah. I'm just going to go very basic with this and it'll look pretty good, I think. I'll start off with the black in the engine grill or any of the hatches where it would be the darkest. Here I've sprayed it with some of the flow improver and you just pile it in there like that and see how well it flows with the flow improver. <laughs> very nice. And also the gloss sort of surface that the Tamiya Clear gives you helps that to flow better. It's still not the awesome superhero that oil washes are, but like I said, it's a bit better for your brain cells than using odorless thinner where you're silently killing yourself. Yeah, so yeah, I've, I've made a compromise for these acrylic washes and it works out pretty well. Now I'll move on to these. You can sort of see these grills in the side under these armored covers. But the, the wash runs in pretty well. I guess you're not going to see too much in the camera from this angle, but <laughs> believe me, it's there. I'll continue on with this and finish up all my washes and we'll move on to the next step. The washes are complete. I used dark washes for all the upper areas and then around the tracks I used the sandy color washes. And I also used the sandy color to do a bit of streaks. So now that that's done, we're going to move on with our fun-loving matte coat. And of course, I'll use that ultra matte varnish that's so awesome. So time to fire up the airbrush again. Once the matte coat is down, you can do all your final painting steps. So here you see it finished. The tank crew is painted up just like my Japanese infantry. So if you want to see that painting rather than go over all of that again, just look at my Japanese painting guide. You'll find it in my channel here. Um, for the tracks, I used pencil to give it a metallic sheen with a soft HB, like 2HB um, lead. Uh, for the exhaust here, I added sort of a rusty texture by just heavily dry brushing uh, mahogany, or no, sorry, red leather and then orange brown. I used the paintbrush to add a bit more highlights on some of the rivets using the base colors mixed in with, you know, the Iraqi sand. Uh, the tank crew, the one difference with him is the helmet. I painted chocolate brown and then highlighted it with U.S. field drab. The gloves were painted light gray and then highlighted with white. The goggles I just painted in London gray and gave it a slight highlight by mixing white into the London gray. Trying to think if there's anything else I added. Oh, on the shovels, I mixed some yellow tan into the beige brown and put a little highlight on that. Also, I put the metallic sheen on the metal tools with the HB pencil. And that's about it. Those those things are standard, though, for any tank you're building. You, you'll probably have your own colors that you use for those things, and you know you can just use them for every single bloody tank if you want. 
So that'll finish this project, and I'm going to do all my Japanese army, armor the same way. So thanks for watching, and I'll put some stills up on the end so you can see this um, closer up. And we'll see you next time for the next Miniature Dork Universe adventure.